You see them in movies or on TV. The lone scientist. They could be a mad scientist or a young budding uber genius, a handsome protege, or an absent-minded professor. Each one of these stories has an underlying theme. They're all fighting against the science community, against the arrogance or conformist scientific community with an idea or theory deeply held emotionally, which they in the end prove to the science community to be true. All of these make for great stories. They're very inspiring and entertaining, but they're nowhere close to the reality of modern science. The science community is made up of humans, plural, not singular. As our understanding of reality becomes more and more advanced, the more that a scientist can do on his own is less and less. Testing is super complicated and super expensive, and the experiments are usually very long and tedious. Because of this, the majority of the Nobel Prizes has been recently given to multiple people for discoveries instead of individual researchers. Back in the day, before journal writing and peer review process, anyone with money could be a scientist, or you could be an alchemist and get some rich lord to fund your research while telling him you were just this close to finding the key to turning lead into gold or gaining immortality. In the days of Galileo, being a scientist required you to be careful that your findings didn't go against the church or you could be killed. The church was the scientific community and facts didn't matter as much as what the church said mattered. As things evolved and freedom of religion and science grew, people were able to form scientific societies to discuss each other's ideas. From this, they began creating ways to transmit the information of their experiments and theories to each other. In the 1800s and early 1900s ideas, there were lots of errors in science, and much of it was because scientists were not very agnostic, such as in fields of physics, where they believed they were pretty close to understanding reality, and science did not move very fast, so paradigm shifts of reality and science were slow to happen. So the scientific community was not very good at it, even when presented with evidence. Einstein was one of many people who had a lot of resistances to his ideas, even when presenting solid evidence. With enough persistence and research, the science community had to change. Modern science is not like the historical view we have of science where individuals make major discoveries. Most science these days is done on the industrial scale because we've discovered all the easy one-person things. There are many specialties in science, super specialized that will prevent one person from seeing the big picture of what is happening in science. If the specialist does come up with an idea, he has to run it against and consult with other specialists in the field to determine if his idea has merit which is why Nobel Prizes these days are often given to teams and not individuals. This trend will continue more and more as the future progresses. The specialization is so great that there are five different string theories in existence, but they are all discussed in completely different terminology to the point that none of the string theory scientists can even talk to each other. Mainstream science is now set up less like a small business and more like a giant corporation. In a self-employed small business, one person has to know everything about finance, business, all aspects of their products, sale and marketing, and accounting. They have to reinvent the wheel anytime they make a change in their business and learn a whole new field about business or go on trial and error. This is the model science used for many years. These scientists were well versed in many fields of study, but they were limited by the amount of information and experimental data they had at their disposal. Therefore, understanding what their discoveries meant really took a long time. Creationists and mystics seem to think that since you don't know everything and you haven't looked at all the data and evidence, then their claims must be just as valid as yours because you're trusting the scientific community as an appeal to authority just like they are. The way they see science, unless you did all the research yourself, you're just going on blind faith like they are. In a giant corporation, no one person can run the company. Everyone is specialized. Every person knows a part of the business, and when they need help in something, they go see another specialized person. There will be whole departments dedicated to an area that a one-man business would have to study up on like crazy and could never know anything more than the amateur's understanding. Most of these people went for at least a four-year degree to specialize in these fields. Just like in big business, science has office politics, disagreements and infighting, as well as biases. 
Getting to peer review and accepting new ideas can take quite a while, not because people are completely closed-minded, but because of the extremely complicated procedures it uses. Just like with any business, they do not want to move too fast or they could jump to conclusions too fast and then give out bad information and embarrass themselves. The media confuses and makes the public distrustful of science enough. If the science community moved too fast and put out bad information, there would be an even higher level of distrust. And there is the key. Scientists don't trust the results of the scientific community because they have blind faith. They trust not what other scientists say, but the scientific process. The process has shown itself to be accurate firsthand by all scientists over and over again. This is not faith from authority, but a proven process one has experienced firsthand. If you disagree with a finding that many other specialists have peer reviewed and agreed on and can find no possible contradicting evidence, you can do the research yourself and find out why these people think as they do. And if you have more evidence, you can write a paper and make a case against the argument. Of course, you actually have to know what their point of view is and their evidence, unlike creationists. The only problem that occurs in science are the same ones that plague any large company. They are slow to getting your paper processed and reviewed, and you have to do some anal retentive meticulous writing to get it even looked at, so it doesn't waste the peer reviewer's time. Most scientists want to do research, not peer review, unless it's on a really exciting topic. Therefore, many scientists have to be drafted via research grants, forcing them to peer review to get the grant money. It's boring, long, but if a scientist passes a crappy paper, it will be caught and attacked by the scientific community, and your credentials as a scientist will go out the window. Also, since most major journals are financed by subscriptions, they tend to only review and feature potentially game-changing discoveries, as opposed to more boring, necessary discoveries. Because of this, websites like PLOS One and PNAS were formed to allow open peer review by scientists all over the world. While the initial peer review was funded by researchers and subscriptions for people who want to see papers put out in the last six months, Everything older than six months is free to the public. This has increased the number of peer-reviewed papers put out each year drastically accelerating science. Big discoveries will probably still remain in journals for the next few decades, but with more data available, new groundbreaking discoveries can occur even faster. The division of labor is what makes us function as a society. Just as no one person can run a giant company, and no one person knows how to refine all the materials to make a modern pencil, no one person can look at all the evidence for science, but they can look at and experience the process in their experience and see results and advancements that come from it and learn to trust it. Trust through repeated experiences, not trust without evidence. This is why we trust science, not because some old dude in a lab coat told us it was true, but because the process works the same across all fields and the process is something we can trust. I made a tag video calling on fellow YouTube scientists to discuss their experiences with peer review and the scientific process at one point in their lives. I got two responses from the five. Now I want to open this up to all my viewers. Please post your experiences with the scientific process as a response to this video. I will fe make a feature video for your video and maybe it will give you a few subscribers. I want everyone to understand how the process works so that they too can trust it instead of assuming that science is just blind faith and as good as any other idea out there.